What's up you guys? Today's video is going to be all about a song called The Father, My Son, and the Holy Ghost by Craig Morgan. You guys have been blowing up my comments in the last two weeks asking me to talk about this song. I was actually going to cover it in a single roundup coming up soon, but there's actually been a whole story that has arisen around this song in the last week or so that make it, I think, worthy of its own video. So Craig Morgan, if you are unfamiliar with him, is a guy that's been around for about 20 years in country music. He's a veteran of the army, and he had really two major hits that were from the same album around 2005. That's what I love about Sunday. That's what I love about Sunday. And then Redneck Yacht Club, which is just a whole ton of fun. That's us, the Redneck Yacht Club. Craig never stopped making music though. He's released a number of singles and, and, and various songs over the years have kind of been minor hits, but nothing as big as those two. But for the past few years, he's been relatively quiet since his family experienced a tragic loss in 2016. His son, Jerry, when he was just 19 years old, died somehow in a tubing accident and his body was found a day later after going missing on the water. And um, it caused him to really pump the brakes in his life. But now Craig has returned with a song that he says he didn't want to have to write that is reflecting on his son's death. Now I heard this song the day it came out. I heard the recorded version and I found it incredibly heartbreaking. I mean it's sad to listen to a father sing about uh, the, the grieving process of losing a kid. But a few things have now happened with this track that have taken it from being a song that was notable to being a song that is kind of the main point of conversation in country music at the moment. The first thing that happened is that the Grand Ole Opry released a performance video of Craig Morgan singing this song. And I've actually not watched that, so I'm gonna take some time in the video right now to do that. With the Father, my son, and the whole Okay, wow. Um, I was honestly doing that to get kind of reacquainted. I'd seen a lot of people send me that performance, but I hadn't actually watched it. This is not really a reaction video. I was trying to do more of a news video, but now I'm crying. So um, yeah, I mean, that's what music does. It's what good music does. And uh, what a beautiful song. What a, what a complex song too. You know, Craig is not just saying, I'm sad and I miss my kid. There's a lot more happening in that song. And what's interesting is this song is just as much a grieving of losing his son as it is like uh, clinging to his faith and to a hopefulness that his faith in God gives him. And he brings in the whole Trinitarian metaphor at the end. Um, I've got the Father, God, my son, who would I guess be standing in for Jesus in this case, and the Holy Ghost. And he's excited to see him uh, when he's gone. I think that's going to touch a lot of people anyone that's really lost someone or is stuck in those feelings. Okay, <laughs> um, but one person that it did touch, one person that it definitely touched is Blake Shelton. Blake Shelton, about a week ago, a week and a half ago, just decides, I want this song to be a hit. Whoever you are watching this right now, there's a song that you got to listen to. And once you listen to it, you're gonna wanna own it. So I'm not worried about that. It's called uh, The Father, My Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's by Craig Morgan decides I'm gonna start a Twitter campaign to make this song a hit. And I find this very fascinating. Here's some of the things he tweeted. I would gladly give up my spot on country radio to get this song on. Wow, at Craig Morgan. You blow me away, brother. There's nothing easier fun about writing a song like this, but sometimes it's just something you gotta do. Now, <laughs> the most cynical part of me is like, even Blake knows how bad his current single is. Hey, all right, hey, all right saying hey let's just trade out for something good but like i said that would be cynical i think it's not hard to imagine why why blake might find this song really moving you know he tragically lost his brother years ago um, he even wrote the song over you which was made popular by miranda lambert um, about kind of being stuck in that grief because you went away how dare you I imagine there's something that really resonates with Blake in this song. And he's just continued tweeting, tracking this, this up the chart on the country charts first, saying, let's go everyone, 74 spots to go. He said 45 more spots to go, 30 more to go. 
And this has kept going and going. Three days after he'd started this campaign and enlisted the help of Gwen Stefani, his girlfriend, and Ellen DeGeneres, and um, all of his fans, it went to number one on the country charts on iTunes. And then, uh, you know, later that day, it went to number one overall, and it's still continuing to sell like gangbusters. It's becoming a real hit. I think that's really cool of Blake Shelton. I actually love that Blake Shelton has never stopped being a fan of good music. Even when I don't always think his music is, is that great, I love that he really loves the experience of being a fan. I remember a few years ago, he tweeted, just, I'm proud. I'm sitting here watching Lauren Elena, and I'm proud to see how far she's come. You know, she's a worker, and, and, and he just had really kind things to say. And, and Blake Shelton, maybe it's his time on The Voice that has made him this kind of affirming encourager. But he really has become one. And I think with God's Country this year, he, he's gained a lot of respect back, maybe from the traditional country crowd. It's just cool to see him support such a good song. I don't want to ramble too much about it. Now, after the song went number one, Craig Morgan took to social media. He says, wow, I'm so completely humbled by all the support the world has shown this song. Blake Shelton, you are an awesome friend and a champion for country music. We love you and I can't thank you enough. The support the entire entertainment community and music fans have shown is a testament to the love that country music embodies. This song is a God thing. My hope is that it reaches all who need to hear it. My son Jerry's work on earth did not end with his passing. Thank you, everyone. He also released a video statement just trying to process his emotions about the song. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart uh, for the support that everyone has shown and continues to show. It's a song I didn't really want to write. I uh, didn't want to sing it and perform it, but I am. My hope is that everyone is inspired uh, and encouraged to seek God, uh, especially when you question uh, what's going on with certain situations in your life, loss in particular. It is cool to see the country community rally behind someone that they really care about and to just connect to a song. And to have this big, huge, gregarious, fun star of country music remind people, hey, this is stuff that I like too. And for Blake Shelton to throw his, his fame behind it, it's really freaking cool. The story does get even cooler though, because a few days after it went number one and all this happened and all the thanks were said, Craig actually signed a new deal with Broken Bow Records, his old label, um, and their probably biggest artist is Jason Aldean, if you want some context on who they are. But they're going to now be distributing this song as an official single to radio. That means that their team, which is very, very strong, is going to have people officially promoting this at country radio stations and asking them to play the song. Now, for all the problems that country radio might have, and I think a lot of those complaints are valid, it is still the number one method of music discovery, if you can believe that. And so the fact that this song is going to get pushed as an official single means so, so, so many more people will have the opportunity to hear it. It might be canonized as a real hit. And this song that was born out of such tragedy might become a, a real touchstone, not only for Craig's career, but for all sorts of people that are grieving. Um, it might be a way in which like his son's death, this real tragedy is is able to give other people hope. I don't think the studio recording necessarily has just as much power as something like the Grand Ole Opry performance, but I think my issues with it are really contained to just the very beginning. I think as the song goes on and kind of allows more of the uh, uh, power in his voice and pain in his voice to come through, then it you, you really do capture more of that emotion. It feels almost weird to review this song, but um, it's just such a cool story that I don't even feel like I need to. So thank you guys so much for telling me to check out this song. It helps sometimes to hear something with fresh ears. I'm finding myself feeling, feeling all kinds of feelings right now. And, um, and that's cool. That's what music does. And I love it. And I love country music. Popular music is often shallow and country music one of the things that I absolutely love about it is that it touches on all these different textures of life. It's not just about the party. It's also about death. It's also about humor. It's also about life, real life. I love enjoying it with you guys. So uh, I'll see you guys in another video soon. Uh, hit subscribe, like it if you like it, hit the bell. And uh, that's it for me, guys. Bye.